Next question is from uh, Blackfish. Uh, Congressman Paul, government investments in science and technology have historically yielded great returns. For example, it has been estimated that technolo technologies derived from quantum mechanics may account for 30% of the gross national product of the United States. Money from the U.S. government has led to the development of the Internet and a long list of NASA spin-off technologies have contributed to our daily lives. In contrast, the risk-averse private sector has little incentive the risk-averse private sector has little incentive and a poor track record for funding these types of long-term projects, although the exploratory research in academic settings is often inefficient at achieving spe specific goals. It has the unique potential to yield uh, unexpectedly amazing results of decades-long timescales. How can one justify reducing the budget for science and technology in spite of the quality of life and national security afforded by the developments uh, from government-funded uh, 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 re research? Uh, th this, is, this is a clear demonstration of a very poor understanding of economics because you're, what you're seeing is that if a government does something and it happens to produce good results, you never ask the question, instead of what? What if they take a billion dollars out of the marketplace and spend a billion dollars and they get a half a billion dollars worth of benefits? Oh, yeah, look, we have a half a billion dollar benefits and we didn't waste a penny. And we didn't have any distribution of this money because of political interest. We, nothing was politicized. At the same time, you don't ask the question, where did the money come from? You took a billion dollars out of the marketplace. They might have done better. They might not have wasted so much money. Government research, although there are some good results, there's a lot of waste in there. What if we take a hundred billion dollars and go to Mars? You say, oh, and that's wonderful. We have all this technology and everything. Well. What if that $100 billion took away from medical care, you know, in the private sector or something else? You have to ask instead of what. Everything, the inference here is that government is perfect. You give it to government and there'll be no shenanigans. The government's the people who got hold of TARP funds. The government's the people who run uh, Amtrak. The government's the people who run the post office. And here the government has messed up our medical care system. So R&D should be left in the private sector. Sure, there's risk averse, but they'll make their decision. Today, today when the government does it, there's no risk involved. They don't care about waste and fraud because it's the taxpayers. What you want to do is when people do research, is saying they have to pick and choose. This idea that good things wouldn't happen if the government had done it. Like one time I remember people telling me, well, just think, the jet, jet propulsion airplane came out because we needed a fighter jet at the end of World War II. That's total nonsense. I mean, it's true that that's when it originated, but it's total nonsense to believe that it wouldn't have come in the private sector. It was the private sector that actually developed it and the government just you know, funded it for war purposes. But to assume these things wouldn't happen, I think it would happen bigger and faster, fairer and more efficiently than depending on government, which has a proven record of inefficiencies in ineptness. And uh, to turn it over to the government and say that they can do a better job is, uh, is, is just uh, uh, literally sacrificing our liberties and sacrificing an efficient system. OK, next one. Um, let's see. This is uh, uh, right, o right Coast, it looks like. Uh, Dr. Paul. Tell you what, no short questions. Everybody has a little discussion here. <laughs> Regarding the theory of evolution, another question on evolution. I think I explained that pretty well. That uh, I, I realize you have said you don't feel the issue is important, but it's, it's been a topic discussed at great length at Reddit and other websites. Well, that's perfectly all right. Discuss it all you want. Just don't impose your views on somebody else. It, wants to disagree, just have a debate, and only a free society can, can provide that. We'd really appreciate an answer to this. Allow me to clarify. Many people mistakenly confuse actual evolution with uh, abiogenesis or life coming from 
inanimate matter. Evolution is not a theory of creation, it is a theory of encompassing genetic drift and selection and describing changes in the genetic material of a population of organisms from one generation to the next. Do you accept evolution in this regard as the foundation upon which nearly all biological knowledge is based, or do you truly believe changes within species from generation to generations does not occur? I don't know. I have, I have no idea. There's no proof that it does. I mean, nobody, nobody shows the, uh, the, the actual body skeleton or the genetics of somebody that transitioned from uh, a, a, a uh, more primitive primate to the human being. So I, I, I just don't think. But this, is, this sounds like the place for it to be discussed. But, but I happen to be in politics. The politician doesn't need to be involved in this and impose these views. And like I said before, you don't want public education because one group has to fight to present their views with the other one. So if you have private schools, te teach this. Teach the fact that the creation came from, you know, a, a burst of energy coming from, we don't know. You have faith in where it came from. Oh, I have faith that it came, but I don't know where it came from. But that doesn't make sense. It couldn't have been some uh, creator that did this. This, this, whole, this whole idea, I think, uh, is, is sort of, should be like a hobby, uh, and, uh, and because it doesn't change the nature. The only, change, the only thing that changes the nature of our life is our understanding about what personal liberty is, and restraining the government, and, and, having, and making sure we have a government that will never restrain you in making a discussion on these topics. And if you have scientific proof that, that you think has to get out there and, and you want to be an absolutist on, on evolution and you know exactly where everything came from and where everything is going and you have that much knowledge, so be it. Other people like myself, I, I, I just, just have too many things to worry about. I worry more about things about auditing the Federal Reserve than I do about worrying about some of, some of these other things. But I can understand the interest, and that's great. But just keep the politicians and the government on it, other than the fact that you have the freedom to discuss it and express yourself and, and make sure that you don't have a government. You say, oh, no, as long as the government teaches evolution, this is okay. But what if the government gets controlled by those who disagree with you? Then they have control of the, of, the, of the educational system. But people who have an absolute perfect answer for all these things, uh, quite frankly, I think uh, uh, it, it's, it's a stretch because you're talking about billions and billions of years uh, of uh, changes that have occurred, evolutionary changes that have occurred. And that's fine, but uh, I think it needs a little bit more study.